they have the opportunity, as no team has had in 20 years, to become the first team ever to win three straight Super Bowls, Shireen. And they've had a weird offseason, but if any team can put that in the rearview mirror and move forward and figure out what they need to figure out and get better on the fly and be there when the dust settles and the confetti falls, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. I said this the last few years. Chiefs versus the field. Give me the Chiefs every day. Well, this is interesting too, Mike, because what people forget about Tom Brady is he won three Super Bowls very quickly. 2001 in his first year as a full-time starter, or we went even full-time starter at then. 2003, 2004. So won those three titles right away. And then it was eight years until he got his fourth title. So he had that long gap between the third and the fourth. So this could separate Patrick Mahomes. If he's able to get that next championship uh, within the next eight years, he's on a faster track than what Tom Brady was. Now, we all know he has to play a long time to do what Tom Brady did, but I, I just think that will put him, that will separate him a little bit and put him on a faster track, obviously, toward doing what Tom Brady did or topping what Tom Brady did and something that we never thought that that anybody would be able to do. And he, he's doing that and he's special and he's going to have the, the Chiefs competing no matter who they put around him because he's Patrick Mahomes. They lose Tyree Kill. And Mike, I thought 2022, I didn't even have the Chiefs making the playoffs. I was like, I don't know who he's throwing the ball to. Other than Travis Kelsey, he's got nobody else. And what do they do? They go win the Super Bowl. And then they come back, and the receiving core is even worse last year. And what do they do? They win the Super Bowl. So I don't care who you put around this guy, who you give him his weapons, he's going to figure out a way to, to have the Chiefs in contention. I'm not saying they're going to win every year, but he's going to have them in contention every single year. And you're going to have to knock off the Chiefs in the AFC to get to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl every single year from now on, as long as Patrick Mahomes is healthy, is going to go through Kansas City. And you've got to knock off Kansas City to get there. And that's just the way it's been. And I think that's how it's going to be for a really long time. One of the reasons they have tolerated the various misadventures of Rasheed Rice this offseason is they see him being potentially special, that they think he picked up the offense even faster than Tyree Kill did. It is not an easy offense to learn. He had nearly 1,000 receiving yards last year as a rookie, got better in the postseason. That's why they have tolerated. And they think that if they keep him in Kansas City away from some of the influences in Dallas, they'll speak to his better angels and he'll stay out of trouble. But and if he wasn't very good, if they didn't think he was very good, he'd have been gone by now. The eight felony charges would be enough for him to be gone. So he's a key part of it. Kelsey's still there. They have Hollywood Brown. And they have Patrick Mahomes. That's the key. And the most impressive fact that I heard this year about Patrick Mahomes, and I hadn't even thought about this. It's hiding in plain sight. The floor for Patrick Mahomes in six years as a starter is losing the AFC championship okay. game in overtime. That's the floor. That's his worst performance in six years. It happened twice. Losing at home the AFC championship game in overtime. Every other year did better than that. It's unbelievable. Here he is on the Chiefs offense from 2023, specifically as it relates to 2022 offensively obviously we felt like we didn't play our best last year and even though we won um we we knew we had a lot of places to improve and I saw I think guys had that mentality coming into OTAs and mini camp and um that's that's something that I think has gotten the best out of everybody is that every single day I mean y'all hear it I mean we're we're talking trash but it's in a good way and then we go off and we talk about it after after practice and what we can do better I think it's been cool that we've been we've been trying like Coach Reed's back to my old days he's forcing me to push the ball down the field if I don't he throws a little little jabs at me like oh you, you want to throw the check down here and I'm like I'm just <laughs> I'm just like I'm, I'm I got you coach we're gonna push it and so uh, it's, it's been fun it's been a great camp and um, like I said, I love the competing. I think that's been the biggest thing is competing both sides of the ball has been awesome. Yeah, see, they've been trying to get him to throw the check down. It's interesting to see they want to open it up a little bit more now. One of the reasons they were fine to move on from Tyree Kill, one of the problems I think was Mahomes is holding on to the ball too long, waiting for Hill to come open, trying to get the ball down the field, have the big spectacular play, and wasn't taking the stuff underneath. Now it looks like he wants him to get back to getting the ball down the field to Rasheed Rice, to Hollywood Brown, guys who can stretch the field, make it easier 
to move the ball underneath because the bottom line is the offense wasn't as effective last year as it had been. They figured it out. They had to go on the road for the first time in the postseason. They had to knock off the Bills in Buffalo in a game that could have gone either way. The Ravens in Baltimore, a game that could have gone either way. Super Bowl win again, a game that could have gone either way. One of these years, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's hard to get tired of the Chiefs. Even though they've won three Super Bowls, they always do it the hard way. And they always create the kind of, like, I said this before. You go to an Indiana Jones movie. You go to a, a superhero movie. You know that Batman isn't getting killed. But you want Batman to be in peril. You don't want Batman to just kick the crap out of everybody. You want Bat- You want to think Batman's going to die, even though you know he's not. That's kind of how it is with the Chiefs. You want to think that Mahomes is going to finally get his, even though you know at the end of the day he's going to tear your heart out and show it to you. Yeah, Mike. His first year as a starter, he had an NFL high 75 completions of 20 yards or more. He was 36 of 88 on throws that traveled at least 20 yards through the air. He hasn't been as successful the last two years. And I think it's because they lack speed at the position and he couldn't trust the guys. We all remember the MV MVS got loose uh, over the middle and, and dropped the ball. So there were so many drops by those receivers that he just couldn't trust them. And so the check down sometimes were the easier play that picked up big yards that they, he knew he was going to move the chains and get the team to the end zone. But now with Hollywood Brown, with Xavier Worthy, who's the fastest at the combine ever in the age when it's electronic timing. And with yeah. Rasheed Rice, if however many games he's going to play, you know, I figure he's going to be suspended at some point for some amount of games. But if you have those three guys, you have speed back in your offense. You have separation. So I do think we're going to see the big plays come back into the Chiefs offense that kind of have been missing over the last two years. And I think it's going to be exciting to watch. And and it's just more worry for defensive coordinators against Patrick Mahomes that he hadn't had they haven't had the last two years with Tyreek Hill gone. I just think this is the best receiving core he's had since Tyreek Hill left. I forgot all about Xavier Worthy. Yeah, fastest guy ever at the Scouting Combine who jumps into that offense. And with Rasheed Rice, I saw someone report several weeks back that. He's not likely to be with the team week one. That's, I mean, he's either going to be on the commissioner's exempt list or he's going to be suspended and he'll be suspended if he pleads guilty. And then the league drops the gavel on a personal conduct policy, unpaid suspension. So he won't be there either way. When we go to Kansas city week one, I'll be stunned beyond stunned. If he's available to play that night, because he's got the eight felony charges And the whole idea of the commissioner's exempt list is when you have 25 million people watching the Chiefs and the Ravens to start the season, you don't want Mike Tirico and Chris Collinsworth to have to check a box, as we would have to do, to point out that Rasheed Rice is facing eight felony charges from a street racing incident. Hell, they may have to they may have to play the video if Rice is playing. And we've seen that video time and again on this program. It is uh, unsettling at a minimum to see those cars weaving in and out of traffic in excess of a hundred miles an hour. So he won't be there. I'll be, I'll be stunned. You know, I, I I don't want to make a broad proclamation because who the hell knows who the hell knows I've been. Yeah. I was stunned yesterday. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, but, but precedent, if precedent means anything and we know it doesn't (laughs) precedent tells Uh us he won't be there. Come week one. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk.